Well, good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Church of Christian Liberty, on behalf of Christian Liberty Academy, I welcome all of you, parents, students, family, and friends. This is a glad and happy day for Christian Liberty Academy and for the students that we recognize this day, our eighth grade and 12th grade graduates. And parents, we want to especially thank you for your encouragement and your support of the work that God has given to us. We believe very much that this is a partnership, a partnering to train disciples for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this afternoon we pause, we reflect, we recognize the hard work, the achievement of our 38 high school graduates and our 33 eighth grade graduates. Our 38 high school graduates join a number of alumni, around 1,000. And this is a small number in comparison to many schools that are graduating, perhaps even 1,000 students. But the Lord does not measure strength in numbers, but rather in hearts that seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And so again, parents, we thank you for your part in this and most of all, we seek that this service would bring glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. We read in Hebrews chapter 1, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This, we pray, is the attitude of you graduates as you leave CLA or some of you as you continue on your studies, that your focus truly would be on the Lord Jesus Christ. Please okay. remain standing. Dr. Bennett will lead us in a word of prayer. Let's look to the Lord and open a word of prayer. Our most gracious and sovereign Lord, creator and sustainer of all that exists, we bow before you this Lord's Day afternoon, invoking your blessing upon this service. Lord, we thank you for Christian Liberty Academy for the 45 years that you have directed and sustained and encouraged and supplied, Lord, for the staff and the teachers that uh, you have supplied to us over the years, and in particular that staff and set of teachers that we have even at this time. Lord, we thank you for their dedication. We thank you for uh, their love of you for their uh, mission calling, as it were, as they sacrifice uh, working at a, a Christian school. We thank you for the students that you have provided to us and pray, Lord, that uh, over the years and uh, this year now in particular, that they have been truly trained academically and in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for parents parents who understand what your word teaches and are obedient to the call to train up their children in the way they should go. They have enlisted the help of a Christian school and have sacrificed greatly in order that they might send their children here. Sacrifices in finances, sacrifices in time and in energy. Lord, we pray that these young men and women that we have seated here at the front of the auditorium have been prepared for the task that is before them. We pray, Lord, that uh, as they uh, leave the school that, and, and as they go forth out into the world, that they would be subduing uh, this culture for Jesus Christ. We pray that you would protect them from uh, temptations from the assault of the evil one, from disappointments that will surely come their way. 
We would pray, Lord, that this small band of young people might be part of that force that would be used by yourself to turn this nation back to Christ and to his word and to uh, the principles of that word. Lord, we know that as a nation we have departed uh, far from that which we once were. And uh, Lord, we would just long to see uh, a culture of young people that would move forward to turn things around for uh, your kingdom and for your glory. We pray that this afternoon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ might be lifted up, it might be glorified but through this service, for it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We read it reading several um, scriptures here that we believe relates to our responsibilities as Christian parents. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that you might do them in the land whither you go to possess it. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. And that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine head, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Following will be special music sung to you by Hannah, Janelle, and Kelsey McHugh, and Amber Bennett. Again, my 
friend until we meet again. May God hold you in the palm of his hand. There is a joy in the journey. There's a light we can love on the way. There is a wonder and wildness to life and freedom for those who obey. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall soft upon your fields till we meet again, we meet again. May God hold you in his like to introduce our salutatorian for this year. Our salutatorian is Christy Ann Laskowski. Christy Ann has attended Christian Liberty since her freshman year. And uh, I remember her in my freshman algebra class, just a young, quiet girl. And it's hard to believe to see her this senior year doing improv. Um, what a change. In addition to drama and improv, she was involved in soccer and in the mentoring program. And she has proven herself to be quite an artist if you had a chance to come to our art show. While Christiane may be somewhat on the quiet or shy side, she has certainly made a presence in this school to her fellow students and to all the teachers up here. It's been a privilege to teach Christy because we can see the humility in her spirit, her heart to serve the Lord and do all things with excellence. And uh, when she does do things with excellence, she's doing it not for herself, but for the glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Truly deserving of this award um, is Christy Ann Laskowski. Friends and family, students and faculty, welcome to Christian Liberty Academy's 2013 graduation and thank you for coming to celebrate this important day of our lives. When I asked Mrs. Morrison what I should talk about for this speech, she suggested that I speak about whatever was on my heart. Well, I thought about it and there's one thing that stood out in particular. It is fairly well known that people tend to take for granted the things that they are undeniably blessed with. For example, it is hard sometimes for us to remember to be thankful for a warm bed to sleep in at night when there are others in the world that have nothing more than the cold ground. One thing we as students take for granted is being educated in a Christian school and having the privileges that come with that. We live in a country that is turning hostile towards God, where students could be suspended for talking about God in public schools and where people are even making efforts to remove crosses from graveyards. We live in a world not just tainted, but decayed by sin, which makes it all the more important for students to receive a Christian education. Many of us sitting here fail to appreciate what we have at Christian Liberty Academy because not only do we receive a vital education, which is based upon scripture, we also have teachers who genuinely care about us. They sacrifice much, sometimes even their sanity, to teach us and minister to us. The school and faculty have contributed to our growth immensely and in a way which I'm sure will stay with us throughout life. So thank you for that. Um, 
We may not fully appreciate these things now, but I know we will once we move on to college and to whatever else God has in store for us. We will look back and remember all the memories we've made with each other. We will remember all of the relationships we've built with students and teachers alike. And we will remember all the things unique to CLA, like Jeans Day cards or the typical Mr. K and Mr. Baldwin phrases. I haven't been here as long as some people, but I would never trade the four years I've spent here, the memories, friendships, and valuable lessons for anything. With that, eighth graders, don't take your high school years at CLA for granted. Take advantage of the capabilities and privileges you have here. Pray without ceasing, learn whatever you can, and grow to be the men and women God calls you to be. And enjoy your time here as well. You've probably heard this plenty of times, but it really does go by like, super fast. <laughs> Um, I speak on behalf of nearly every high school graduate sitting here today. Although we have complained a lot over the years, we love the school and we will truly miss it. And lastly, seniors, I'd like to read Joshua 1, 7 and 9 to you all, 7 through 9. Be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We've been blessed with a wonderful Christian education, so let's seize it to the fullest. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to announce our valedictorian for the class of 2013. Our valedictorian is Sarah Recker. Sarah has attended Christian Liberty since first grade, and um, I only knew her in high school, of course, teaching. And there she was involved in drumline, mentoring, and student chapel. I think all of the teachers on the staff would agree that uh, Sarah is an ever cheerful presence in the hall, and uh, she truly is a role model. You can see the fruit of the spirit in Sarah's life. And I love to see her reaching out to um, other students, younger students. And uh, she spoke to our girls and girls chapel, with all our student chapels, speaker girls, and uh, did a wonderful job. Sarah. Um, is going to Judson University in the fall to study graphic design and she earned a $14,000 annual scholarship for her time there. Please help me congratulate Sarah. Thank you Mrs. Morrison. Hello everyone, fellow classmates, congratulations. We have made it, so let's clap for that. <laughs> well, I feel honored to stand here before you all today. For myself, it's been a long but exciting 12 years here at Christian Liberty Academy. First of all, I wanna thank our headmaster, Mr. Thad Bennett, for his leadership and work to make this possible for us seniors. I thank the staff and faculty for pouring into us, for loving their jobs even when we make it hard for them. Parents, we owe you immense gratitude, for we truly would be nowhere if it weren't for your help and guidance and love, so thanks, Mom and Dad. Friends and family, thank you for rejoicing with us, for supporting us along our journey into adulthood. And above all else, I thank God for who he is, what he's done for us, for his love, his mercy, and grace, which we are so unworthy of. Now, preparing this speech was difficult, which at first I honestly dreaded. I consulted my brother Alex first, but his only advice to me was to burst into song, lean on me, but I'm not going to do that, so I'm sorry to disappoint, brother. <laughs> but many of my afternoons were spent consulting with Mr. Morello, one of my best sources for guidance and inspiration. He gave me tips on speech giving in the art room, probably my favorite place in the whole school. 
And upon writing this, I did not want to influence you with any personal advice from my own meandering experiences here at CLA. Instead, I debated one question. What next? What do we as seniors do next? Because seniors, I know you've heard this many times, but today truly does mark the beginning of a new chapter in our lives. Our foundations that we've built at this school will play a huge role in determining our outcome. And what we have chosen to absorb in our years here will shape and impact us. So what next? The more I thought about this question, the more I realized that I really cannot answer it. Many of us have grown up together here, but now we are parting ways. The beauty of our God is revealed in how much he loves each one of us to give us unique and individual futures. And as, Christy, uh, as Christiane mentioned before, we are truly blessed to grow up in Christian education. We have security in our future plans, the ability to trust God with our entire being, something that we can't even grasp, but we have that here. And whether we realize it or not, our education has impacted us and will continue to do so. So seniors, we say that we're grateful. We say that we will miss this place. We say that we'll keep in touch. We say that we will keep our faith strong when we go off to college. We say that we won't get into trouble. We say that we will become successful and get married and have families. We say a lot of things. And we tend to answer the question of what next based upon our own ideas and aspirations. But ultimately, only God knows what is next for us. And it is only when we listen to the Lord that our plans are made clear to us. Many of us, including myself, have learned this the hard way, only to realize that the Lord gives and he takes away. And I went through a period in my life where I was putting my hope in my own dreams and aspirations, and things didn't go my way. It discouraged me, but God has his reasons. He taught me how to rely on him by showing me that his plans are better than my own. So back to the question, what next? This is why this question cannot be answered so simply. For whatever is next in each of our lives rests in our Savior alone. And let us not determine our own future, but work diligently on the plans that he has for us, and he will reveal those plans if we are willing to listen. The Lord also works in amazing ways. He might bring people into your life to show you which way to go. For me, it was my art teacher, Mr. Morello, as he encouraged me to do what I love and pursue my passion in the field of art. The Lord can use people in your lives. I duly thank you, Mr. Morello. Proverbs 19.21 says, Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. So seniors, keep your eyes open. Tune your ears to Christ's calling. Act upon your own personal experiences and encounters in this place. For the Lord's purpose will prevail, and none other than that. So God bless you all, and thank you. It's been a blessing to work with these seniors if they, as they've prepared for life after Christian Liberty Academy. And as they move on to college and then into the workplace, I am confident that they are equipped and prepared to go into the world and make an impact on the culture in which we live, ready to give a defense for the hope that is in them. And I just want to say to you seniors, may the Lord be pleased to use each one of you in the expansion of his kingdom here on earth. But now I have the privilege to recognize two seniors and present them Christian Liberty Academy Founders Scholarships. These awards consist of two $500 college scholarships given in honor of two founding members of the Church of Christian Liberty, Pastor Paul D. Lindstrom and Susan Teagarden Morrison. These scholarships are funded by Friends of the Church of Christian Liberty and are awarded annually to two graduating seniors. Our first scholarship honors the late Pastor Paul D. Lindstrom. God has gifted our first recipient with a quiet, gentle spirit and a servant's heart. After much prayer, he has decided to pursue a career of helping others through the area of nursing. He will attend Olivet Nazarene College, where he received a $13,000 annual academic scholarship. Once he graduates, he hopes to live out his faith in the workplace so as to impact every patient he encounters. Just as 1 Peter 2.12 says, so that they may see your good works and glorify God because of it. 
According to his sponsor, he has already influenced others positively with his faith, especially by reaching out and interacting with younger students here in the halls of Christian Liberty and at various extracurricular activities and through his participation in the mentoring program throughout his four years in high school. In addition to mentoring, our recipient participated in soccer and several other sports programs, drama and improv club. He was a member of the student chapel team that preaches once a week during chapel times and anyone who has heard him speak has witnessed his passion for God and the word of God. The recipient of the 2013 Paul D. Lindstrom Founder Scholarship is Tom Salzgiver. Our second scholarship honors the late Susan Teagarden Morrison. The recipient of this scholarship has loved learning and has always been drawn to educational-based activities. She is passionate about Christian education, especially in the realm of English and literature. This fall, she plans to attend Olivet Nazarene College, where she received a $15,000 annual academic scholarship. At Olivet, she will study English education with a minor in ESL, that's English as a Second Language. She hopes to teach her future students how to view literature from God's perspective and apply it to their lives, and also to help her students find their identities in Christ. In the process, she wants to follow 1 Timothy 4.12 and be an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Throughout high school, she has been a Sunday school and vacation Bible school teacher at her church. Her pastor said that her deep faith and pursuit of God's word has had a pro profound influence on members of her youth group and the students she has taught. He said she is a faithful woman who desires to shine the light of Christ in all that she says and does. Here at Christian Liberty, she has been a small group leader, a member of mentoring, and a teacher on the student chapel team, in addition to other numerous extracurricular activities. The recipient of the 2013 Susan T. Garden Morrison Scholarship is Christy Kozer. One more founder scholarship it does not go to a high school student. Um, it goes to an elementary student because that's where our, this founder really made an impact. For over 40 years, Michael Sherman touched the lives of countless students as he taught Bible at Christian Liberty Academy. I just would like to ask here, if you're in the gym and you ever had Mr. Sherman as a Bible teacher, raise your hand. Many of us, many in the audience, parents sending their children to Christian Liberty, I trust that you all still remember the answer to his well-known question. What's the good word? Praise the Lord. Yes. Mr. Sherman was a, great, a man of great humility and godly character. Each year to honor him, teachers select a student in 5th through 8th grade who exemplifies the fruit of the Spirit as Mr. Sherman did. And this student is awarded $1,000 towards their school tuition. This year's recipient has shown godly character in the classroom and excelled in, in his classwork and uh, just been a role model for the class. This year he went on to the Illinois um, Junior Academy of Science State Fair, winning a gold medal for his project and special recognition for his um, category of uh, project. This year's re uh, recipient of the Michael Sherman Scholarship is Jonah Bouvier. This time I'm privileged to introduce to you our commencement speaker, Representative Thomas Morrison. Tom graduated from eighth grade from CLA, I believe 25 years ago. After completing his high school and college work, 
graduating from Hillsdale College with a degree in history. He worked in the radio industry, and then the Lord opened a door for Representative Morrison to come back to CLA, where he taught fifth grade for a number of years. Following that, uh, Tom and his oldest brother ran a disaster restoration business. And as Representative Morrison and others have commented, this was the perfect business to prepare him for entering the disaster of Illinois politics. Representative Morrison is currently serving in his second term. He serves not for prestige, not for a paycheck. He serves there because he believes that is where the Lord has opened a door for him. This is the Lord at work in his life, and he has been given a calling to serve in what is often a very hostile place, a very dark place. And so he takes his responsibility there as a calling. And so we're blessed to have Representative Morrison serve Christians and others in Springfield on our behalf and I am thankful to call Representative Morrison a friend, a stepbrother now, and most importantly, a brother in Jesus Christ. And so please welcome with me Representative Thomas Morrison. Like another well-known politician, I might need water when I'm talking, so I don't know if you know that see Marco Rubio uh, take a break for water. But anyway, uh, it is a wonderful privilege to be here. And when um, my friend and, and stepbrother Calvin introduced me and said that I was here 25 years ago, I was thinking, that's a quarter of a century. Am I really that old? <laughs> uh, but I know you parents um, can know what I'm talking about. You students, you'll know what I'm talking about eventually. Time does fly. Uh, but it is by God's grace that I'm standing up here addressing you today because when I was sitting in those seats right there, there is no way uh, I could have envisioned God putting me here uh, today. So I, I just thank God for that. It, it's a privilege to be here to give this address to you today. I'm, I'm happy to celebrate your commencement here with your parents and your family members and your fellow classmates. Um, I was happy to, to uh, hear that there's a scholarship for Mr. Sherman. Uh, it seems as though there's a shrinking number of students who had him as a teacher, but I want to see once more, how, how many of you had Mr. Sherman, maybe not as a teacher, but how many of you had him play piano in your chapel classes or know of him? Okay, and so I'm going to ask this once again, because this was a little bit weak. Uh, students, what's the good word today? Okay, that's a lot better. Uh, shortly after I got elected, I was walking through the Stratton building down in Springfield. That's where most of the representatives' offices are. And a colleague passed me in the hall and he just happened to greet me. He said, hey, Morrison, what's the good word? And instinctively, that's how I answered. And of course, he gave me a very strange look and we continued to walk in separate ways. And I thought, you know, he knew that I was weird before, but now he is certain of it. But the interesting thing is, about 10 minutes, the same, 10 minutes later, the same representative came back to my office and he closed the door and he wanted to talk about his faith. He wanted to talk about mine. And so you never know how God is going to use incidents like that. Uh, by the way, I can't wait to meet Mr. Sherman again. I know he is, uh, had a huge impact on my life and, and on this school, and I'm just so grateful for him. Speaking of Mr. Sherman and other teachers, I just want to take this opportunity uh, to give thanks to all of you parents uh, for sending your children to this school. My own uh, parents are here. My dad is here, my stepmother is here. And graduates, I hope that you would join me in giving your parents a round of applause, uh, thanking your parents for, for sending them here. So what is, what is my charge to you this day? I don't think that's me, is it? It's, it's got to be the Democrats, I'm, I'm sure of it. Uh, first and most importantly, first and most importantly,
my, my charge to you as, as graduates is to get your life right with the Lord. Uh, I did have the opportunity to speak at chapel a couple of months ago. Some of you students were there, but in case you weren't there, uh, I didn't get saved until after I left the school. So it is, it is possible for someone to attend a Christian school for 10 years or more, uh, to even attend, attend weekly church services and not know the Lord. And so uh, my charge to you would be to not let another day go by, not let the months or the years go by without getting right for, with the Lord. I know that the world and all of its temptations are so charming, but deep down life is shallow. It is meaningless without a walk with the Lord. Do not resist God's lordship over your life. I know most people try to gain happiness through worldly wisdom and worldly ways. I know that I did. But deep down, I lived in great fear. I lived in, in terrible fear of death and judgment. And one day, all of us will stand before the Lord face to face. And as I said, for many, it will be a day of great dread, but for others, a day of great anticipation. So I ask you, what will it be for you? Of course, I pray by God's grace that it'll be a day that you and I both anticipate. Secondly, I want to tell you about the joy and the fulfillment of a life that is wholly dedicated to the Lord. Because when we're freed from the shackles of our own sin, we're free to serve him and to impact the world with his power and his strength. So how are we to serve him? How are we to know his will for our lives? I was really happy to hear our valedictorian, uh, Sarah Record, alluded to this in her speech. But often we wonder, especially as young people, what is God's will for our life? How do we know that? When I was teaching fifth grade here, I used to have my students memorize Proverbs chapter 3, in particular these verses. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Now those paths aren't always so clear to us. They're not so plain, but we can look back and see his hand of providence. And I can't tell you how comforting it is to have experienced God answering prayer time after time in my life and doing it in a way that is, has been for my good. My third point today is especially when, when the world is in so much turmoil Remember that God alone is our true refuge and strength. Especially you graduating seniors, you are facing a world that uh, has uh, been going through tremendous upheaval, especially within the workforce. Or maybe you're going to continue your schooling and then you're thinking, what am I going to do after that? What does the future hold for you? Well, there's no doubt that our state and our national economies are going through uh, upheaval like we haven't seen before, not in our lifetimes anyway. There doesn't seem to be any room for error. But with so much uncertainty out there, I want to encourage you. Just take a deep breath. Don't attempt to plan out or worry about how the rest of your life, lives are going to play out. Because guess what? In all of this uncertainty, nothing is a surprise to our God. And I know the bad news, it seems to bombard us 24-7 on the internet, on television. And that stress, if we let it get to us, that stress can lead to dangerous levels. I was uh, surprised to read, though, but suicide is a leading cause of death today. So to keep from sinking into the despair that afflicts so many, we must keep our eyes fixed upon the Lord. I can tell you that at times uh, since leaving Christian Liberty, uh, even in recent times, I've experienced the, the despair the despair that occurs uh, when I've taken my gaze off the Lord. But the words of Jeremiah 29, 11 come back, and they have been a great comfort. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So students, do be diligent in your studies and your work, but understand that ultimately man plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. And our country, with all of its current troubles, and by the way, most of those troubles seem to be caused by our own uh, human foolishness, but our country is still greatly blessed in this world. 
and we so often take for granted the religious freedoms we have, the political freedoms. And by the way, those freedoms that have been given to us by the sacrifice and the blood of others. And we need to be incredibly grateful for that. But additionally, we have the free enterprise system, which while it's, it's under attack, it still has produced wealth, prosperity, and productivity like no other time in history. And it continues to amaze me how, how creative people, how hardworking and, and uh, uh, in, ingenious people have come up with ideas and services that have benefited mankind, that have uh, created prosperity. But the economy is extremely dynamic, and it's rare that anyone would work for just one company or work in one field anymore. So as you enter these waters, I know that you may enter a time of great turbulence and trial. But God is faithful, and wherever he does lead you to work, whatever you do, work heartily, as for the Lord and not for men. As uh, Pastor Lindstrom was introducing me, he described where I've been. It, it hasn't been a, exactly a normal career path. You know, broadcasting, teaching fifth grade, uh, cleaning up disasters, now being in the legislature. It's been a, a, a pretty wild ride for me. And many times I've wondered, God, what, what are you doing? Why, uh, why have you led me down this path? Or, or uh, why did I get here? How did I get here? But my trust is in him. And God knows our end from our beginning. Nothing is a surprise to him, as I've said. And we need to trust in him, trust in him at all times, for he will be a refuge for us. And even in those times when we stumble and fall, when we fail, God uses those experiences to teach us, to remove the dross from our lives. I want to just add as well that one of the disciplines that I am so grateful for from Christian Liberty is the value of scripture memorization. I can't tell you how many times those verses I learned as a student or as a teacher teaching my students, how those verses came back to me in times of, of crisis or in times of confusion. Uh, times where I, I was in doubt or just needed guidance and God's word was a light to my path. And so my charge to you students would be to continue to memorize and meditate, pray upon God's word. Particularly the, the Psalms and the Proverbs have, have been a great blessing to me. I want to also challenge you to become the leaders that will stand in the gap, to take the educational and spiritual foundation that you have received here and whatever field you serve, whether it's business, healthcare, law, education, the mission field, or at home, wherever, serve the Lord. And don't consider your youth to be a hindrance. But ask God. Ask God for purity of heart and mind. Ask him for humility and submission, wisdom and understanding, conviction and courage, leading and guidance, fruitfulness, influence, patience, perseverance, love, and joy as you serve God and as you serve your fellow man. Until we see another great revival in this country or until Christ himself returns, it will be increasingly difficult to be a true and outspoken Christ follower. You probably will be ridiculed. You probably will be persecuted. Some of you may suffer the scorn of a, a professor or friends or the loss of a job even due to a righteous stand you take. Some of us may even lose our lives in service to our Lord. But are we willing? Are we willing to be completely sold out for Christ? He sacrificed himself for us and our sins. Why should we expect better treatment for ourselves? I will close with this, a, a passage from Deuteronomy 30. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life 
that you and your offspring may live. Loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, holding fast to him. For he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to them. And with that, I ask God's blessings upon you, graduates of 2013. At this time, we will have the presentation of diplomas, and we'll begin with the eighth grade class. Would the eighth grade class please step, rise and step forward? Erin Anderson. <laughs> Sophie Beal. <laughs> Annie Bennett. <laughs> Fane Bennett. Autumn Bentz. Mark Cabrera. James Cunningham. Emma DeRitter. Titus Philemon. <laughs> Rebecca and Sarah. <laughs> Valerie Carr. <laughs> Andrew Kaiser. Connor Kirkwood. Thomas Lowry. Jaime Lugo. Cristo McGlaris. Jasmine Marsh. <laughs> Julia Miller. <laughs> Mackenzie Moeller. <laughs> Crystal Monasterio. Sarah Nalepa. Angelina Nichols. Josiah Pittman. Eve Rowe. Leonard Rule, <laughs> Isabel Silva, <laughs> Simon Sue, <laughs> Michael Sullivan. Grace Vestudo, <laughs> Richard Wirtz, <laughs> Elena Weitzel, <laughs> Vin 
Zachary Weitzel. And Isabella Wilkie. Eighth graders, you may now move your tassels. Join us in congratulating the eighth grade graduation class. Ninth graders, you may be seated. Seniors, class of 2013, please stand to receive your diplomas. Our graduates are Blake Adelsberger, <laughs> Vanessa Alas, <laughs> Sean Anderson, <laughs> Timothy Beal. Rachel Cabrera. Darby Calkins. Samuel Chu. David Colbert. Kristen Kozer. Julia Cosmos. <laughs> Emily Cote. <laughs> Beth Cunningham. <laughs> Jonathan Delinsky. Benny Amin Philemon. Rachel Freeman. Benjamin Halston. Josiah Herman. Angelica Jaziak. Alexander Kaplan. Samantha Carr. Melissa Katz. Christiane Laskowski. <laughs> Emilio Mondragon. <laughs> Erica Negron. <laughs> Juan Pagan. Adam Palmer. Sarah Rucker. Kenya Romero. Jack Salzgiver.
Thomas Salzgiver. <laughs> Nicholas Salvador. Winston Scott. Marcus Silva. Mia Von Gillern. Max Weber. Laura Voidel. And Isabella Zarate Miller. Of 2013, may now move your tassels. You are officially graduated from high school. Freshman, be seated. We close our service asking for God's blessing. And before our close, official close, I would invite everyone to the cafeteria. Following the service, we have some light refreshments. And the celebration can continue down there or up here as you so choose. But if you'd like some cake and some other refreshments, please join us right below here in the cafeteria. I would ask that you would stand as we humbly but boldly seek the Lord for his blessing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we again seek for your blessing at this moment, not looking within for inspiration, but looking to you, humbly seeking your blessing, not because what we have done, but because of who Christ is, who we seek to follow. And so would you give us through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the ability to obey and serve you, to keep truly our focus where it needs to be, not distracted by the constant stream of drivel that so easily finds our way into our thoughts. And Lord, we do endeavor then to be faithful in following you as so many who have gone before us. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you.